Hello everyone, welcome to my very basic guide about the AP PowerTech, one of my favorite specs in the game. It is based on the very simple idea of having all the burst damage in the world and exactly none of the defensive abilities. You are a pure glass cannon that is designed to run in, blow people up, and then probably get blown up in return. It's a lot of fun, so let's talk about it. Brief disclaimer, as always, I'm not an expert in the spec. I'm just a turbo nerd that plays the game a lot and has a basic idea of what he's doing. So take this all with a grain of salt. The first thing we need to talk about before we dive into the actual abilities here is the buff called Energy Load. All of AP re revolves around building these stacks of energy load. It is this red icon with a number next to it. You build these out of combat by entering your energy regen. In this case, it's my push-ups or your regen of choice. You can see as I'm using push-ups, it's slowly building up these red stacks of up to four until the energy burst starts to glow. Energy burst is your hardest hitting ability in your rotation. It is a catastrophic amount of damage to an unsuspecting target. And it's basically what we're trying to build throughout the entire time we're playing AP. So how do we build these inside of combat? Because obviously we can't be using our energy regen in combat itself. So if I spend my four stacks here, well now how am I supposed to use my energy regen? I can't, the game doesn't work like that. Fortunately, you also build these stacks by using your rail shot. So you can see here I use my energy load. Bada bing, bada boom, I now have one energy load because I use one rail shot. However, the cooldown of rail shot is rather significant. It is for 14 seconds long. That's too long to be doing it naturally in combat. That's, that's gonna take forever to build up these four stacks. Fortunately, we have a, another passive buff that we need to be paying a lot of attention to. It is called Prototype Particle Accelerator, which means that every six seconds or every four global cooldowns, we are able to reset the cooldown on rail shot. We do that by using other abilities in our rotation. We'll talk about those when we get to them. So just know that the basic fundamentals of AP is building stacks of energy load by using rail shot, getting up to four stacks, and then unleashing the burst with energy burst and doing a dick ton of damage. It is catastrophic. That's the very basics of what we're trying to do throughout our entire rotation. Now you can see here, we actually don't have a rotation. We have a priority tree. You may remember this from the Sork system where we set up a priority tree down the left-hand side of our screen of what our abilities are and which ones are most important and when we should be using them. So let's start from the top here. The first isn't that sexy. This is Retractable Blade. Retractable Blade deals a moderate amount of damage. It is a dot that lasts for 18 seconds. Now that's not very attractive. It's not the big burst damage that I promised you. However, it is very important, especially on a target you're gonna be casting on for a very long time, that you have the retractable blade on here because what's gonna happen is that when you use rail shot, the duration of your retractable blade is going to refresh. So it's gonna be ticking in the background all the time when you're doing like boss fights because you're going to be fitting so many rail shots into your rotation that the Dot damage is going to continue ticking, 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 ticking. It's very nice. It also helps with your energy management. So that is priority number one on targets that are going to live long enough to benefit from the dot. There are going to be some times in like mob pulls or trash pulls when you don't want to actually waste a GCD putting gut on the target. However, for the larger boss fights or when you're like tunneling a healer, it is kind of important to have that dot ticking at all times. Moving on down the list here, we have our first ability that resets the cooldown on rail shot. So remember we talked about prototype particle accelerator. So we see rail shots on cooldown. Now, if I use my rocket punch, boom, I can use my rail shot again. Rocket punch has a 8.4 second GCD, at least with this level of alacrity. It deals a really solid amount of damage and doesn't cost as much heat as some of our other abilities do. So it is our top priority when it comes to in combat priority system. The next ability we're gonna be talking about here is our thermal detonator. Thermal Detonator does about 22,000 damage. It is a really solid chunk of damage with a very interesting twist. For one, it doesn't reset the cooldown of our rail shot, which is kind of a shame. However, when you throw it on the target, it's going to sit there for two global cooldowns and then explode. So you can see, I'll demonstrate here, we'll throw that on the target, I'll fit a rocket punch in, and then I can time it so that my rail shot and my Thermal Detonator are going off all at once. This creates a massive spike in damage, especially on player targets that are they're not ready to deal with that. 
because that is two very heavy hitting abilities that are poof, popping at once that can be devastating to any health bar. It's Thermo Detonator as a 14 second cooldown, very high on our priority list, however, does not reset the cooldown of our rail shot. Next on the priority list is going to be Energy Burst. Energy Burst, we already talked about this, does a great chunk of damage, you can see here, poof, 40k damage just for one GCD, plus a little ticking damage afterwards. Very nice. It is glowing when it's ready to rock and roll. So just know that don't use it when you're less than four stacks. Only use it when you have your four full glowing stacks. Moving down the line here, we have Rail Shot. We already talked about Rail Shot here. You can use it about every four global cooldowns because of Prototype Particle Accelerator. Does a really solid chunk of damage and helps with your energy management a lot. So it is the next ability on the priority tree. We already talked about this. An interesting twist on Rail Shot compared to the other specs that use Rail Shot is that in AP, you do not have to have the target be vulnerable to use a Rail Shot. You can see here, there's not a dot taking on this target. It's not stunned. So with a lot of the other specs, you have to have a vulnerable target. With AP, you can just use it whenever. So just interesting thing to note that you can just use Rail Shot anytime you like compared to the other specs. We're moving on to the most dangerous ability in the entire spec called Magnetic Blast. Magnetic Blast has no cooldown. It does a okay chunk of damage. It is our primary filler ability, but it generates a lot of heat. Now, AP heat is a massive problem. If you are not paying attention, you will totally screw yourself. You can see here, I'm just using Magnetic Blast and you can see my heat bar slowly start to rise and rise and rise and rise. Now what AP heat does is that the higher in heat you go, the slower it regenerates, which means that if you screw yourself, you'll be sitting here for a very, very long time. Magnetic blast is usually the root cause of when you have heat problems because you're using it too much. You need to pump the brakes on how often you're using magnetic blast. You can see here the heat is still recovering. That's how long it takes if you screw yourself on heat in AP. Now you do have your heat vent abilities to help you out. However, if you don't have any of those, you could just be stuck sitting here for like 20 seconds before you're able to use other abilities. So that is my primary warning about this ability. However, it does reset the cooldown of rail shot, which is very nice. And it is a really solid filler ability. You just have to use it in moderation because if you get over 30 heat, you're gonna use the final ability in our priority system called rapid shots. Rapid Shots is the most boring ability in the game. It is your very first ability you get on any Bounder Hunter or Mercenary. It is your basic filler ability. However, it generates no heat and it does some damage. So whenever you're at over 30 heat, that's when you want to use your Rapid Shots because that way you're making a long-term investment, right? If you just go ham the entire time, you're going to end up with 100 heat and then you're going to be sitting here with nothing to do except Rapid Shots for like 20 seconds. So instead of doing that, we're going to invest in our heat management at about 30 heat here. Those are the basic abilities to be using in AP Power Tech. A very basic opener for AP looks something like this. So we're going to pre-gen or pre-cast all of our energy loads here. Oh, I forgot to mention one final ability here called Shoulder Cannon. Shoulder Cannon, we're basically going to use in our opener and with one of our OCDs, we'll talk about those in a quick second here. It doesn't have any global cooldowns, you can be using them while using any other abilities, which is really nice. It's just basically free extra damage, doesn't generate any heat. It's, uh, it's very tasty. So we're going to precast our shoulder cannon before the fight starts. The shoulder cannon lasts for about like five minutes. So you have a lot of time before you actually have to use your shoulder cannon. And then once you use all the missiles, it'll go on cooldown for like a minute and a half. So let's talk about a very basic opener here. I'll be using uh, the, retract the Energized Blade Tactical for this opener, but you can use any opener or any tactical you like. We'll talk about those in a hot second here. So I'm going to be building four stacks. And then the first thing we wanna do is we wanna throw our Thermal Detonator on the target. This is because we want our massive tick of damage to proc all at once. So what we can do is we can throw Thermal Det and then gut the target and then unleash our burst all at once. So I'm going to use Flame Sweep immediately to get my cast of prototype, prototype Particle Accelerator. I'm going to throw my Thermal Detonator. I'm going to Gut. And then I'm going to spend my offensive cooldowns called Explosive Fuel. 
and then rail shot into energy burst or into rocket punch the energy burst. So that's that's a lot happening very quickly here. So let's walk through that one step at a time once again. So that is thermal detonator first, then retractable, then rail shot, rocket punch, energy burst. So I have my four stacks. I'm using my flame sweep to create my particle particle accelerator. I am thermal detonating, gut, rail shot with my OCDs, rocket punching, energy bursting, and then reverting back to my opening or my priority list here. So you can see here, rocket punch off a of cooldown, detonator off a of cooldown, and then I'm going to be filling and filling. Oh, rail shots off a of cooldown. Bump, 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 bump. Rock punch off a of cooldown, rail shots off a of cooldown, energy burst, etc., etc. At this point, it's just following this rotation to make sure that you are using your abilities in the correct order. I would highly recommend sitting at a target dummy and just practicing, just casting into the target and not screwing yourself over on heat. However, before we get into what our tacticals and our gear set is, we have to talk about some offensive cooldowns. The first major offensive cooldown that we have is called Explosive Fuel. Explosive Fuel gives you an extra tech and critical chance for 25%. Essentially, it's a, it's a free 25% crit um, on all of your abilities, which is really, really nice. It's free crits. Who doesn't love free crits? That has an interaction with our armor set. We'll talk about that when we talk about our armor set. The next offensive cooldown is going to be our power yield. What power yield will do is it'll give you extra armor whenever you take damage. And because of the utility, it's going to be actually giving us extra damage for every stack that we have as well. Now you build these stacks by taking damage and it lasts for like 30 seconds, depending on the utility that you take. It gives you essentially more defensive options and it gives you extra damage depending on how much damage you're taking. While we're sitting here, we'll talk about our one, or no, we have, we have two, I'm sorry, we have two defensive cooldowns. Wow, we're blowing our minds right now. With the first being Energy Shield, which is a straight 25% DR for 15 seconds on a two minute cooldown. Kinda sucks. Kinda really sucks. However, it's free DR. So if you're getting tunneled, like pop it. I'm not gonna say to not pop it. However, don't rely on it to save you. The next defensive cooldown is gonna be our Cultal Overload, which has a three minute cooldown compared to a lot of the other specs which have like one minute cooldowns it heals you up to 35 percent health and then it kind of sticks you there it doesn't go over 35 percent however it is free healing up to that 35 percent mark so it's nice it keeps you alive during desperate situations however it's not going to heal you up to like full like say a juggernaut will so just be aware that you're going to delay death but not prevent it by using your cult of overrides okay those are our basic offensive cooldowns again Critical chance with explosive fuel, extra armor and extra damage with power yield, some minor DR with energy shield, and then delaying death with cultal overload. Now let's talk about our tacticals and our armor set. The armor set that I would recommend you use is Meteor Brawler. What Meteor Brawler does is it reduces the heat on a lot of your abilities, the heat cost for all of your abilities, basically whenever you're using them in your rotation. Um, and then it increases your damage dealt whenever you use these abilities for like 15 seconds, then it goes on cooldown for 30 seconds. So it's free damage, essentially. Speaking of free damage, whenever you use your explosive fuel, you'll be building these stacks of Firefall. Now what Firefall does is that once your explosive fuel ends, it's going to detonate. You can build up to seven stacks of Firefall. The way you do that is by using your abilities in rotation. You can see here, if I'm using explosive fuel, and then Magnetic Blast, oh, I'm building these stacks of Firefall. Building these stacks of Firefall. Oh, look, building these stacks of Firefall. One easy thing to note is that if you use your Deadly Onslaught, it'll automatically build you up to your seven stacks. And then boom, it explodes for like 50K damage, sometimes up to 60K damage. It's very nice. However, that's not the most important part of the Meteor Brawler set. Free Fall is the most important part of Meteor Brawler set. What Freefall does is that for, what is it, 20 seconds after you use your explosive fuel and it ends and it detonates, you have 20 seconds of half heat generation, which is obviously very important because all of our abilities are generating heat. We don't want that to be happening and screwing ourselves over. So this heat generation is really, really nice. You can kind of keep going ham for an extra 20 seconds without worrying about screwing yourself over on heat. So Meteor Brawler is really the way to go. 
you can use some other sets that are like more defensive in situations for like solo rank or team rank. However, Meteor Brawler, you're almost always going to be very well off using this set. So 100% recommend that you do. AP Power Tech has three options when it comes to tacticals. The first option is your sustain option, Energized Blade. What Energized Blade is more for like operations when you're targeting bosses that you're gonna have high uptime on. When you use Energized Blade, whenever you generate a stack of energy load, you're gonna be building the same stacks of Energized Blade up to four stacks. These st this stack or this buff lasts for 10 seconds. It essentially increases the damage of your gut. Now, as we talked about, gut's going to be ticking for pretty much the entire fight on fights when you have very high sustained damage on it. So you're gonna be doing 100% more damage with your gut. It's free damage is the sustain option. It's not very fun. I'll say it's much more of a thing you have to juggle of, oh, make sure you're maintaining up to four stacks of your Energized Blade the entire time. Hooray, who cares? Not really anyone. It's it's really boring, but if you're in PVE and you have a boss you're gonna be a high, a high uptime on, that's the way to go. The fun one, the very fun one, is going to be Power Load. What Power Load does is that when I'm out of combat here with my target dummy, is that it increases the critical chance of your energy burst by 100%, which means you're going to crit on your energy burst every single time. So no more of this like, oh, I hope I hit this target hard. You're just gonna crit every single time. Additionally, when you have this uh, power load in, every time you pop your power yield, which is a one minute cooldown, you're going to build five stacks of energy burst. You can see I don't have any stacks. Oh, boom. Three stacks, bada bing, bada boom, another power yield, or another uh, another energy burst. Now what you can do with this is if you are targeting like a player, you can hit them with your opener, so you're gonna throw a thermal detonator on them, you're gonna hit them with a rail shot and then an energy burst, and then you can just power yield and energy burst them again. That is a catastrophic amount of damage we can demonstrate here in a hot second. It is a great way to nuke people from like 100 to like, 40 because you're going to be hitting them with so many abilities so quickly if you combine this on top of like an explosive fuel and all of your shoulder cannon it can do like 200k damage in a very very short period of time which is obviously uh pretty cool pretty pretty cool you have 10 more seconds before we're able to demonstrate this again if you're going to be on like a target you think you're going to blow up i wouldn't recommend filling with a bird or with a gut because i'm sorry i keep calling it gut that's the vanguard side retractable blade because it's not the target isn't gonna be alive long enough to benefit from having the actual the extra long ticking dot. So in this situation, we could go like detonator and then explosive fuel, power yield, power yield, and then suddenly you've done an apocalyptic amount of damage very quickly. On top of that, we're going to be building our stacks of firefall, which means that we're going to be detonating in a, just apocalyptic amount of uh, damage on the target very quickly. One thing to keep in mind is that the uh, your energy burst does create a fair bit of heat. So you'll probably have to vent heat a little bit here and there if you're doing this opening rotation on a target. However, we have some utilities that are gonna help us out here. The third and final tactical worth mentioning here is probably the last one you should bother picking up. It is the flame detonation tactical. Flame detonation, what happens is when you throw your thermal detonator on a target, it's going to wait for a hot second. And if you use your searing wave or your flame sweep on the target, it is going to detonate and deal a massive amount of damage to all nearby enemies. This is basically the only AOE tactical we have in the entire game. It's very useful for like flashpoint pulls or for operations situations when you have a bunch of mobs stacking on top of each other or for like Odessan war zones when people kind of stack on each other. AP doesn't have a lot of AOE, so this is kind of our only solution. So to demonstrate, I brought us to this very familiar hammer station pull. If you don't know what this is, then uh, you probably, uh, I don't know what you're doing with your life. So we're going to pull all these guys back here. We're going to wait and let our lovely companion Blizz heal us up. And to demonstrate, we're going to now wait for all these guys to wander around. We are solo in this group right now. Now we're going to spend everything. Flame detonation, and then boom, there's a catastrophic amount of damage. We're going to be doing deadly onslaught to everyone. Hippity hoppity, all your health bar is in fact my property. You can tell that we did a monumental amount of damage to all these enemies very quickly. 
and almost single-handedly leap this entire section of mobs all by ourselves in a level 70 cap flashpoint. We did a butt ton of damage. You can see here if I pull up the chart, you can tell exactly, oh, when everything hit. The damage broken down by ability here is going to be our thermal detonator doing about a quarter of our entire damage because of that tactical. So it's a lot of fun, especially in like flashpoint situations. However, it's not the most useful. You should probably pick it up third if you're going to pick up all three tacticals. Speaking of utilities, let's talk about them. Now, there are several options when you come to AP power tech and your utilities. These are just the ones that I use. You're more than welcome to use anything else. I do swap these out sometimes for like cut balls when it would be hard to win a target. But as like a very basic option, this is what I like to run. The first option is going to be Iron Will. Iron Will is going to give you more CC breakers, which is great, and then give you more hydraulic overrides, which is also great. Mobility is kind of a problem for power techs, so having the extra movement speed of power hydros is very important. Next is going to be gyroscopic alignment and jets, where you vent 20 heat when stunned, immobilized, knocked down, or otherwise incapacitated, and then you do 10% damage to your next ability. This is great for PvP because you're going to be getting stunned a lot, or CC'd, or rooted, or slowed, etc. So having this passive heat generation is going to be really, really nice for us. We don't have to worry about it as much. Finally, when up close and personal is triggered, you'll, extra do, you'll deal an extra 3,000 damage to the target. It's just free damage, basically, whenever you're engaging with the target. So we like that. It's a lot better than the other options here. You can swap this out for like suppressive tools, which gives you a slow. Um, or if you were, think you're going to be CCing a target lag, you'd swap that out for like prototype electric surge. You're going to get you more darts. There are plenty of good options here. This is just what I run. Down here in Masterful, I like taking the mutilating shards. It slows your target by 75% for 15 seconds. 75% slow for 15 seconds is going to be obnoxious and it prevents people from running away from you, which is nice because we're a melee class. So it's a, it's a great little route. Shatter Slug is not really in our primary rotation. However, if you just use it as a slow, uh, it's great, especially because Shatter Slug damages multiple targets. So you can just slow an entire enemy team if they're stacked on top of each other so that there's no escape. Uh, and then you could just burst them all down. It's cool. Next going to be our Pyro Shield. Pyro Shield basically turns our crappy energy shields and turns it into a slightly less crappy energy shield because then every time someone attacks you, you're going to be dealing damage back to them. It's okay. However, there's not many options here that I would take over this in this certain situation. And finally, Efficient Suit. Every time you activate Cult to Overload, it's going to be a CC Breaker. So you basically have an extra CC Breaker on top of your Determination, which is very nice. Additionally, it's going to increase the range of your Grapple and your Shoulder Cannon by 10, sec 10 meters, which is just really, really handy. Down here in Heroic, I take Shield Cannon here. Um, so whenever you deal damage with your uh, shoulder cannon, you're going to be healing yourself for 3%. We have 7 darts, so it's like 21% of your health bar you can get back over the course of your cast. It's not great. However, the, the basic self-healing is really nice to me. However, I can totally see why you would take another option. This I just like because I like the extra self-heals. You could swap this out for like a torque booster, which is going to increase the duration of your hydraulic override, which is really nice. Additionally, Overdrive is going to be also boosting our Hydraulic Override by making our movement speed an extra 45% when active. So you can see here, when I activate my Hydraulic Override, I'm going to be zooming all over the place compared to the normal speed boost provided by Hydraulic Override. It's um, almost like a mini leap. So you are able to close distances on targets much faster using your Hydraulic Override, or you're able to run away much more easily by using your Hydros. Finally, we take Combustion Chamber here. What Combustion Chamber does is that for every stack of power yield that we have, we're going to be doing an extra 2% damage, and then it extends the duration of our power yield to up to 30 seconds, which is just really, really nice. It's free damage, and then it extends the duration of the extra armor as well. As we talked about, Pyrotech doesn't really have defensive cooldowns. Our primary defensive is our actual armor rating. So you can see here the damage reduction of about 30% whenever you have heavy armor on. That's really your only way of surviving is just your natural heavy armor. Our defensive cooldowns aren't that great. So by applying extra armor stacks to us through our power yield for an extra 30 seconds, it's going to give us a lot more survivability than what we have normally, which is none. That's the very basics of AP. Uh, it's a very simple priority system spec that revolves around building these stacks of energy load and unleashing them on a target. 
Again, nothing too crazy going on here. Just a very, very fine glass cannon. So let's hop into a match and see if we can demonstrate how to put it to work. Let's go. All right, so uh, we got a Void Star, which is really good for us. So we're gonna be starting off by pre-casting our regen here. So we get our four stacks of energy load. And then once this is done, we'll start up our shoulder cannon to make sure that's ready to rock and roll whenever we find a target. We're probably just gonna hold W here and find a target and try to nuke them. That's probably the most fun way to do this. So we'll see how it goes. It looks like we have a healer or two on our team, but our front line is pretty much me, which means that we'll be taking the brunt of the damage here which is totally fine. We're gonna sit back and wait and see where they're coming down first. And then we'll see if we can spot a healer and then uh, destroy them and ruin their day by playing AP power attack. So let's see, there's a juggernaut. No, we don't want him. We want a squishy target. There's a power attack, interesting. This Mara is Ripper, which is not good for us. However, I see a sword back here. Let's see if we can not run to him, throw everything down. Unleash the burst, unleash the burst, and then he's already bubbling. Now this is power attack, so we do have a, um, we do have the advantages of a taunt, which is very nice. You can also see here that when we're using our power load, every time we're using, or we are getting critical, we're building stacks of our, um, of our energy burst, which means that we can almost get this guy, there we go, even though we're standing in the middle of like three people. We can still knock some people down. We're gonna run away here very heroically and see if we can get back to some of our healers here. And maybe, just maybe we're gonna get away with this. That's not good at all. We are not gonna get enough healers here, unfortunately. Oh, this guy's really trying though. He is really, really trying, but we have another AP power tech on us. So we got a little too aggressive there. And then we lost the door on the other side. That is absolutely catastrophic. That's okay. We're here to do damage and everything else is uh, kind of secondary. So we're just gonna hop right back in and we found our squishy target. And unfortunately you can see here, this is the problem with the melee power tech is that uh, your movement speed can be very, very limited. Which means that you just kind of gotta slowly waddle forward and hope for the best. That man is healing up, so we're not gonna hit on him yet. It is always good a, a good idea to be taunting other AP power techs here because they do a lot, a lot of damage which can be very, very bad for us. And it also means that you can get basically free medals every time that they are uh, turning into somebody. It looks like we're gonna run out of uh, out of help here though. Well, maybe not. Maybe we'll live for a little while longer, but not much. I am doubtful that we will live much longer. However, we ha do have some small self heals here with the, uh, with the Kulto and then the extra Energy. I'm sorry. The extra shoulder cannon. Sorry. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to think too much here. It looks like though they've uh, knocked down the other door, which is not good, or the other bridge, because our team is holding W into them, which is uh, not the way to win this game. So we're gonna stay back here and kind of chill for a hot second. This man is coming back. We'll do some ranged poke damage and make sure that they can't do anything too crazy. Let's see if we can't have some fun here and pull this guy off the bridge. Come here. Oh no, he lived. That's not good. Now, to prevent him from doing the same to us, we're going to use our Hydraulic Overrides to stop them from pushing us off. Hydraulic Overrides prevents you from getting knocked around, which is obviously very, very good. Now, he is guarded, which is a shame here. We're throwing out some of our taunts and see if we can't put in some work now that we have our uh, our explosive fuel back. Sorry, I'm, I'm blanking on the names right now. I'm trying too hard to focus on actually doing damage. Now, the, uh, the Firefall is an AoE, so if we stand in the middle of all these people, we're going to hit them all with the uh, AoE, which is just really nice. We put a little extra hurt down on all these fellas. This guy is a Vengeance Juggernaut. However, this guy is very, very low. Oh, no, he's at full. He has all his stacks of heals, so we're not going to be hitting him. It's a much better idea to let him sit at no health for as long as possible instead of trying to force through his healing. However, we do not have any health for two seconds, so we're gonna wait one 1,000, two 1,000, get behind the, the side here, and then pop our med pack. Now we are gonna be running low again, but we do have our cult though to, to delay death. Again, not prevent death, just delay it. Throw out as much damage as you possibly can. Hit these guys as a slow, just to be obnoxious on the way out into the grave. And then they have a full door, which is a real shame. So we're just gonna sit back here and regen up. 
I'm gonna call the left side here because it looks like they're in a bit of trouble. Now we have our full stacks back. There's a guy planting door. There we go, our team got him. It's all good. Unfortunately, we got stuck behind this massive door, which is a real shame. However, that is all fine and dandy. Come down here. Oh, hello, sir. He's not the main problem. You, these guys are the main problem right now. So I see this man is a Sork, which means that I can come up here and just unleash the massive burst into him. And there's very little he can do about it other than embrace death. Hopefully, eventually, we can knock him down. Boom. Shakalaka. However, it did cost me my entire health bar, which is just kind of the way that AP rolls. You do a lot of damage and then you just die immediately. This is the way. That's fine. Let's see if we can get out before the door comes down. Thank goodness we did. Okie dokie. Well, we're back on the grind here. Hello. We're going to spend up our defensive cooldowns because this is where hopes and dreams come to die in the middle of everyone. We're going to spend our deadly onslaught so that way we get our full seven stacks and then slow people up. And then if we CC them all here, there's no way they can get away from our firefall in time. And we're gonna do a lot of damage to everyone at once. However, we are also gonna cost us our lives because this is just what the AP does. However, we can stop this guy from capping door because we have our hydros up, which means we can get there faster, which means that it's much harder for them to stop us from getting to the door and stopping us from stopping them. However, you can see right here, oh, it looks like we are in a fair bit of trouble because we're getting casted on by a whole bunch of people. However, we do have some squishy targets here to just be free casting into. I see a lot of people, so I'm going to be spending all my AOE or what AOE I have, which is uh, basically nothing. However, uh, it gives that little extra survivability for that little extra amount of times so that we can get through and do extra damage. A lot of AP is just finding the right target to pick on. So you can see like right here, it's this, uh, probably actually this, uh, this operative. Now we can see that these guys are debating picking up the... This guy thought about picking up the health pack and then didn't. So I'm going to take it instead. Because uh, he's just a real gentleman and decided that he wanted to leave that for us because he knew we were making a YouTube video and therefore uh, didn't want to screw up our vibe. Now you can see here I just threw down my grenade and then to reflect. Reflect is probably the most dangerous ability that you can be tunneling into an AP because you can embarrass yourself for all of your own damage which is obviously not the way you want it to go. This guy, however, seems like he would love to be our friend. So we're going to wait 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. Now he is blowing his evasion, which means now we can just come in here and absolutely go to work. This is all fine if he wants to sit here and just sit here and cast with me because he doesn't know what he's missing, which is all my love all the time. And by continuing to cast into me, he is building up more of my stacks, which means that I can do my energy burst more, which means that I can kill them faster, which means that I'm going to be doing more damage and feeling better about myself as a human being because numbers are all I have in life. Now you can see here, we're just going to stand in the middle of everyone and try to get a firefall off. Hippity hoppity, your health bar is in fact my property, unless of course you force barrier, in which case, you know, your health bar you can keep for a small period of time. Now we did a lot of burst damage there. Again, it's all about picking your targets properly and then just holding W and embracing death because you're a glass cannon. That's just kind of the way it goes in the world of the power tech. We're gonna sit here, we're gonna build up our four stacks right away. Think about life for a hot second. Think about what is life? Why are we here? What is our purpose? Are we just meat computers? I don't know, but perhaps. Now that our existential dread is over, we can determine, it looks like our stealth is gonna head to the right, which means that we should go to the left and try to pull as many people there as possible. Unfortunately, because we are a power tech, we can't delay in the same way that like a juggernaut can. However, we do attract a lot of attention, which means that we can just kind of waddle this way and then people are going to come to us because they want to stop us from doing a butt ton of damage on them. You can see here, this uh, Mara wants me. So I'm going to come over here, throw down my love, break this, and then 1, 1,000, bring him back to 1,000. Oh, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. They all love me, they all love me. I'm gonna sit here and just do all the damage in the world for as long as we possibly can and then just embrace death because this is the way. You see they're all still on me, they're all still on me. However, we can do a good amount of burst on these fellas. He, this guy is guarded, which is gonna stop us from doing all of the damage in the world, which is uh, kind of a shame. However, this is just the way it goes. Then it looks like we have all of these guys heading left, which means that we can just roll right and stop these guys from uh, 
or stop them from stopping us from getting the door. I'm not going to bother sitting up here and building up five stacks. It's much more important to be getting right back into the game than it is to like sit around and build my five stacks in my opening burst. Especially in PvP, it's more important to be active than it is to have like the ultimate setup, right? You want to be getting in back into the action as soon as humanly possible. So that way, when the time comes, you can just nuke people. And then, boom, he's dead. There's a there's an operative over here which also needs to embrace death. We don't have anything else for the white bar. Unfortunately, there's no way we can stop him from stopping us. However, he's got it up, so we can use our carbonize here as soon as this door drops down. Never mind. We didn't need to. This man is just going to die immediately, so uh, we're not going to spend anything else on him. Now, what we can do is we can use our hydros to just haul ass down to the next node here. So we're gonna spend up our flame strike or swain sleep, and then hopefully stop people from stealthing us up. Now it looks like we can just run all the way down here and snag this door real quick. Hopefully our teammates are back there CCing people up, or maybe their team just isn't here at all. Yep, there's one CC, there we go, we got the bridge. Now we can haul booty up to the other side. Our operative is hopefully gonna roll left here. If not, I'll hang a sharp left up. Oh, never mind. there's one guy. Now, unfortunately for him, he's come to us in an interesting point in our life where we have all our offensive cooldowns up. So we have one, I'm going to pull him back here, and then he's going to embrace death and love me forever because he is my friend. We're going to CC this man so he can't get over there to the other door. And now we just win the game because we planted both doors and they weren't ready for it. I'm not even going to bother. Oh, this man's just going to run to his death. That is a, <laughs> a pretty sure he just killed himself. Uh, that's, uh, you know, F. And that is the turbo burst of an AP power tech. It is ridiculous how much damage you can do, especially on an unsuspecting target. He's just got a little poke for good luck. And that is the game. You can see here, even though we died seven times, we still did about 8.2K damage. Ripper did more because he's Ripper, he's a madman. Um, however, we have a catastrophic amount of burst. That was a very good game, a very fun one. And that is just showing off what the AP can do. So if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'll be happy to get back to you as soon as possible. I hope this guide helped you. It's a very simple spec. Just build your energy load stacks, unleash them all at once, and then just try not to kill yourself on heat because when you do, you're going to be sitting there for 20 seconds with a dick in your hand. So try not to do that. Other than that, that's all I have. You guys have a good day. Be good. Ta-ta.